Happy New Year, Bookmatic Lifelong Learners. It is fantastic to be here today. I hope this year is a fantastic year for you. In this video today, I want to talk about the 15 of my favorite books from 2020 so that you can have some suggestions about maybe what you could read in 2021 that are fantastic books. Now, I read 69 books total in 2020. I mean, it was quite a crazy year of reading. Um, and I picked 15 of the best ones, the ones that I thought were uh, the most impactful in my life. But hey, it's worth worthy of checking out, at least check out some of the reviews, because I'm going to explain about each one, kind of like what I remember from the book and why I chose that book. So down here, I will include the chapters. So if you want to skip a book, no problem. Uh, it's, it's one of those videos that you can kind of skip through. So don't worry about watching the whole entire thing. Make sure that you uh, give it a thumbs up though. That way more people can see these recommendations and also make sure that you're subscribed. So let's get straight into the video. Waste no more time here and get into it, okay? All right, so the 15 books are in no particular order. So let's get straight into the first one. The first one is Reframe the Day by Adam Lowenstein. Now I got this book as a uh, author promotion. And whenever I read author promotions, um, I, I read the book with a very open mind. Uh, just because it's a promotion doesn't mean that it changes my perspective. One thing that could change my perspective is the interaction with the author, uh, because I actually talk directly with the author and I get an idea for who the person is and why they wrote the book before I even start reading the book. So that could change my perspective and give me some uh, insight into what the book is about before reading it. So Reframe the Day was actually a very good book for 2020 because of the pandemic and the lockdown. It was really about um, basically finding almost like stillness in your life, like stillness is the key. Finding balance in your life between work and other things. Um, work and your relationships and anything that goes on in your life. It was a really good book. Um, what else can I talk about it? You can check out some of the reviews and uh, see how you like it. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth checking it out. The second book here is the book you wish your parents had read and your kids will be glad that you did by Philippa Perry. And this one here is a great parenting book. It really helps you to dig into your past and see some kind of the past pain points like what your parents did as parents, what they did to you, whether it was good or bad, and how that affected you, and how that might affect your children if you continue the cycle of, hey, what, this is what my parents did to me, so I'm going to do this to my kids, or sometimes the complete opposite of that. And the next one here is The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. This one, I do have to say, this is my favorite book ever, uh, ever so far, because who knows, I could read another book that's better than this one. But the reason why this one is the best one that I have read to date is because it touches on every single human aspect. Every aspect, business, leadership, relationships, arrogance, depression, uh, anything that comes to your mind with human nature, it explains it in this book and gives you great examples and also strategies so that you can become a more understanding person, understand yourself better, which helps you to understand other people better. And when we understand other people better, we can get along with those people. We can uh, persuade those people like the opportunities are endless with this book. I highly recommend it. And along the same lines, the next one is Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Now I read two Ryan Holiday books this year. I read another one last year. 
uh, uh, sorry, not last year, but uh, 2019. And Ryan Holiday is a great, great author. Uh, Ego is the Enemy is one of his older ones. And I just felt like it went along uh, along the lines of the laws of human nature, but more just specifically talking about ego. So the examples about ego were a little bit more detailed, I would have to say, because the whole book is about ego compared to the laws of human nature. And uh, it just really helps you to realize that, you know, not, none of us are perfect. And sometimes our ego comes out and the book gives you some good strategies to help push your ego down, that way you can be a better person, no doubt. And the next one here is the 80-20 principle by Richard Koch. And basically, you want to 80-20 everything. You want to 80-20 everything in your life. And that, uh, the great thing about this one is it also talks about relationships too. Like people think of it as a business principle. So 80-20, your business uh, means to focus your energy on the 20% of the things that get you 80% of the results. But that could deal with like happiness and relationships, basically uh, doing the things in your life, uh, the 20% of the things in your life that helps you to get 80% of your happiness. So the 80-20% pr uh, principle can be applied in anything. And uh, that's why it was such a powerful book. That's why it went on my list. Number six is Traffic Secrets by Russell Brunson. This one was a really cool book this year, uh, especially with the launch of my online course and uh, just continuing uh, my social media presence. Like the Traffic Secrets, really good for building up your influence with people. And also it has a whole lot of strategies for making connections and building up your network as well, which is really important because the network that you have is basically your, your net worth. Traffic Secrets really helps you to build funnels for your business to bring the clients that really need your service down your funnel so that way they can buy your service or your product. So Traffic Secrets is the business marketing book uh, out there that I personally loved the most. And the next one is 10 Foundations by Pam Car Cordano. And this one is a really good companion book, surprisingly, to Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Uh, read that one a few years back, and that was also on my favorites list. So when I was reading through this, I saw a lot of comparisons to Man's Search for Meaning. Sometimes there was a quote, and then there was like an explanation as to how Pam uh, like put this in her life. And she's like a psychiatrist, uh, therapist, and she's been able to adapt Viktor Frankl's methods into her own practice, as well as build upon them. That's why the book is called 10 Foundations, because she focuses on 10 areas of life to help her clients, her patients become like more well-rounded and maybe less suicidal, less uh, depression. So she, she really explains quite well. And it's actually a short book, like 112 pages or something like that, 120 pages. So yeah, it's, it's really easily digestible and practical. Okay, and the next one is Measure What Matters by John Dewar. And this is a great productivity book. Uh, pretty straightforward, just like the 80-20 principle. Uh, but a lot of great examples about how you can apply the uh, OKR, which is objective key results in a very organized fashion. So you could use this personal level or business level on an organizational level. It's really effective, I believe, like what it looks like in the book and the examples. Um, so you can create your OKR, which are very transparent to everyone in the, the organization. That way other people know what other divisions are working on. You could even use it in a school, use that uh, as an example. So you know what goals each division is working on and they're very actionable and very clear. It's kind of like a smart goal, but I personally like the way that it's uh, set up because 
um, I, th I think it's more specific than a, a smart goal, more achievable. And they're organized in a quarterly fashion. So you have kind of like a deadline that you have to work with. In three months, what do you want to accomplish, right? So, oh yeah, and the reflective process. I mean, I can't talk enough good about this book because it is amazing. So definitely check it out. And the next one is High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. Bouchard, I think he pronounces his name. Um, so yeah, this is a really good one because it talks about your success habits. Uh, and he is just a straightforward guy. He seems like a very likable guy. He talks about a lot of his co uh, coaching sessions with like CEOs and leaders. And he basically, it's just the book is all about how you can become a successful leader as well. A very well-rounded person. I mean, I'm going to have to re-skim through the book to refresh my memory. Uh, I just remember it being a very, uh, very good, good leadership book. A uh, very good book about habits. And I believe if I recall correctly, there are seven of them. Uh, but I may be mistaken. So that, that's why I have to go back and look at the book here. And I do recommend reading it if you are a high performer, basically. The, all the habits have to do with high performance. If you want to achieve more, read it. The next one is Take Your Shot by Robin Waite. Now this one uh, was a really cool book as well. Like it's very short. It's written as a story, but it's about business. Um, so the story, is, it goes around this golf coach who is struggling. He's struggling to get clients and he's charging by like an hourly rate. Uh, so the book talks about the strategy of not charging at an hourly rate uh, and creating like packages around your services. So rather than just offering one package for every single person. You could offer packages to focus on specific areas that uh, your clients may need to improve on. And also you're able to adapt those packages for your clients needs. So for me, it was a very good book to read because I have a service-based business. And so sometimes I need to adapt my personal service to the client's needs. So yeah, really good book. It has a nice framework, uh, very easy to follow, very easy to implement in your business. And the next one here is How We Learn by Stanislas Dahene, Dahene, something like that. <laughs> uh, it's a bit hard to pronounce. Uh, so anyway, How We Learn was also one of my top favorite books, like uh, along with The Laws of Human Nature. Uh, it specifically deals with how we learn from uh, childhood. It does talk a little bit about adulthood as well. Uh, but the best thing that I like about this book is the four pillars. So the first pillar is dealing with attention. So this really works well when like we're reading or learning or anything that we're learning or doing, uh, we need to have our 100% focus on what is going on at that time. If we don't have that attention, then our learning is not going to be optimized. The next one here is active engagement. This is actually getting out there and experimenting on what you learn. Because without that experimentation, the knowledge just sits in your brain, doesn't really go anywhere. And the next one here is error feedback. So we learn from what went well, we learn from what went badly. Basically, error feedback is looking at the results of our actions. And the last one is consolidation. So uh, the book talks a lot about the sleep consolidation. Uh, so when we sleep, our brain takes that knowledge and uh, uses it in the most efficient way. But also I want to adapt this one a little bit to my own personal um, way that I learn is reflection. The book didn't really talk much about that. Uh, so reflection is basically journaling, um, taking the time to, 
to actually dig deeper into what you learn. And this is a very important step in how we learn as, a, as humanity is reflection. So very powerful book. It had a whole lot of other information, not just about the four pillars, but about other useful and practical information to apply in your life. And the next one is The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. Now, another great thing about this book, uh, all these books kind of tie in with each other a little bit here and there. This one ties in with how we learn because it's a build, measure, learn, feedback loop. Whenever we're building a business, we can use this build, measure, learn, feedback loop to improve our business. So you build it, you measure, you see what the results are, you see the response from the clients, and then you learn how to adapt that, pivot or wh whatever you wanna do with the knowledge. So I cannot really talk enough good things about the Lean Startup. It's really good for people who want to build up a business, uh, but you can easily adapt that build, measure, learn uh, feedback loop in your life as well, in other areas of your life. Uh, so yeah, The Lean Startup, great book. Next one is Educated by Tara Westover. This was my favorite memoir uh, autobiography last year. Um, I read a couple of autobiographies and this one came out on the top. So that's why it goes on this list. And yeah, I mean, just her story is very eye-opening because I had no idea that there were people living in parts of the US or maybe even other parts of the world where they were completely cut off from everything else. No TV, no phone. Uh, eventually they got a phone, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a very eye-opening story. It deals a lot with like um, feminism, deals with religion, deals with education, of course, hence the title uh just with a whole lot of aspects of life that it, i mean it's just a really good book you gotta check it out number 14 is this day by philip gabbard and this one kind of blew my mind because it's not the typical self-help book that you would normally read uh, I mean, the table of contents, you can just pick up on his sense of humor right away. Table of contents says something like, here's the beginning, here's the, the major content, page two through 200, and here's the conclusion, right? So, I mean, but I mean, he's just kind of joking around a little bit. He does provide a real table of contents, but each chapter is kind of like a short essay on uh, this guy's thoughts of life. Um, and this day really helps you to put yourself in the present moment. I've read several books about that, The Four Agreements, The Power of Now. Um, and so it kind of has that feeling to it. And also The Power of Words, uh, which was a major aspect of the book. So yeah, this is a great, great um less heard of book that I think you should check out. And the very last book here is The Influential Author. Uh, I don't know, I just put it in the last part of the list, not that it's the bad book or anything like that. Of course, it's a great book. That's why I include it in my list. Uh, but I would say it's, it's good for writers, of course. Uh, it's for people who want to publish or self-publish their own nonfiction book. And uh, it, I mean, uh, the book is packed full of useful insights about, it's, it's almost about the, I guess, it is about the philosophy of writing your own nonfiction book. Um, so it doesn't, it's not like one of those books that says step one, step two, step three, step four. No, but it does bring you through the process of writing your book getting it out and published and uh, seeing the response, like how to respond, getting your book up on Amazon. Like it talks about all those different things, but I love the philosophy, uh, philosophy behind it. The philosophy behind the book is really good, really deep. 
it's one of those books that I will return to as I'm writing my own book. It's that good. It's that good for authors. So yeah, Bookmatic Lifelong Learners, that concludes the list. I hope that a lot of these suggestions help you out. I hope you're able to read some of them if they fit well with what you are working towards. Remember, I'll link the video up here. You can check this out. Uh, the three ways to pick a book. One, curiosity. Two, problem. Three, expertise or purpose. You can watch the video here where I go more into depth, depth with those. So yeah, I hope that 2021 is a great reading year. I hope it's a great everything year for you. Lots of happiness, lots of success. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions at any time. Maybe in the comments, you can let me know some of your favorite books from 2020, or maybe some of the books that you plan on reading this year. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed to this channel here, and I will see you in the following week's video. Take care. Thanks for watching everyone. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like these. Also follow my other social media accounts such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for more valuable content. Thank you for watching again and I will see you guys next time.